It may be short, like myself, but it's still one of the greatest. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is the new wall, this is the new room, this is the new setup, and unfortunately this does display how short I am. If you never knew that before, well you do now, and I bet my roommates are laughing about it. This is my review for Season 3 of Supernatural, and this is my personal favorite season. While I do love this season, I will try to be as non-biased as possible in terms of this review, but it is going to rank high because a lot of the episodes, aside from one, rank up pretty darn well. There's a great average of sixes and sevens in this season, so let's get to it. Season three is just a great season overall because of its theme, its ever-present theme of Dean's limited time before he's taken downstairs. I do love how this is a constant factor throughout the season. It's not nailed over the head, but it is a constant sort of reminder element used in several different episodes, whether it's from Dean trying to throw his life away very recklessly, or the idea of Sam having to come to terms with Dean eventually dying, or Dean coming to terms with the fact that he is going to die and being afraid of it and trying to save himself because of it. I love this season immensely because of how many different risks this season took. The fact that it wasn't a giant trash heap during the entire issue that was the 2006 writer 2007 writer strike the fact that this show came out so well considering how many others faltered so terribly because of it is a miracle in itself it needed this little personal sort of look at everything before it eventually exploded into the war of heaven and hell that eventually would be season four and five i believe that all the decisions made in this season were correct sure there are maybe a few episodes that lack kind of like bedtime stories sin city but there are so many standout episodes and so many great adversaries and battles battle against gordon walker the fight in the police station and justin bellow the very comedic episode being Bad Day at Black Rock, which was one of the funniest episodes in the initial five seasons. I also have to obviously make such a giant shout out to the Mystery Spot episode, which was its own Groundhog Day episode, a very complicated episode to pull off considering a TV show budget. However, it was done very well, and it is one of the best episodes of the season, not if also the entire show. I do love the preseason finale. This is the first time that this season ever got a preseason finale episode right with time is on my side the frankenstein doctor character still stands out to me as being one of that kind of ambiguous villain characters that entire episode's premise is ambiguousness with how and why and what measures should dean go to to try and stay alive and in certain situations is it worth living when you're in a situation like that and then the final episode while it starts off a little bit rough, it eventually turns into one of the best season finales of all time. The last 30 minutes are some of the most nail-biting shit that this show's ever had. And that finale, that last shot, has stuck with me forever, ever since I watched that episode live, ever since I saw Dean get ripped apart and put on those hooks and screaming Sam's name. I've never forgotten that. The fantastic writing that was in this season considering the absolute heap of bullshit that they probably went through to try and get half of it done it's amazing to me how well this was pulled off there was a lot of characters that were introduced in this season that got a lot of flack back during the airing days and i've never understood why but i feel that those main fans those those very vocal fans have become the majority fan base now maybe i might be wrong but i thought that ruby and bella were great characters i thought ruby was a great kind of can you trust this person a very good anti-hero and then there's bella who has definitely aged a lot better since i first saw her i thought she was a cool character in the first time i watched it but now seeing it she's got layers she's very well acted by laura cohen how her story is technically left up to interpretation we all kind of figure that she dies but actually kripke didn't write her to die that's how i that's why the episode is shot the way it is because they thought they might bring her back however the vocal minority just didn't want her to come back so they cut her character and hey look it's done great for her she got in walking dead and became even bigger of a name and then ruby too i actually did like this version of ruby there's two different sides i understand the ruby that we get in season four and i kind of attribute that that the demon takes on the personality of the human ever so slightly maybe 
Ruby was just that one case. But then all the setup that is done in this season without even really being implied is so masterfully laid that Ruby's purpose to this show you could see that they didn't 100 percent know what they were going to do but they damn well near got as close to what they were thinking they were going to do as they could i think the boys personal issues and struggles while been have been done to death by now are very well laid out in this season this is the first time that we really see the two starting to distrust each other starting to kind of come at the seams which leads into season four into season five i do enjoy Dean's peril. I think that's probably one of the reasons why I like this season so much and the fact that it actually benefits from having less episodes is what helps it out immensely and I think that that's what really led this season to being as good as it was. Are there some low points? Yes. Like I said, Bedtime Stories is just this dumb episode put in that doesn't make any real sense in terms of actually just having a narrative purpose. Sin City's got one really great side to it and a very side to it. There's the Ghost Facers episode, which admittedly is not as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually kind of funny. There's the witch episode, Malice Mala. I'm not going to repeat it because I can't get it right. I thought that episode was a lot better than I th than it was, but it it's, it's still okay. There's so many good episodes in this season. Bad Day at Black Rock, Red Sky at Morning, Fresh Blood, obviously the Christmas episode. Holy shit, the Christmas episode is so freaking good. Just a very wholesome, very, very great brother episode. It's one of the best between the two of them. Dream a Little Dream of Me, which I never knew was a Nightmare on Elm Street homage. Uh, then we had Mystery Spot, Justin Bellow, two back-to-back -back seven to seven episodes. A long Distance Call, which again, I thought was actually not as good as I remember it being, but it was very good. It was actually really, really good, and that villain is something that I wish the show would have used later on again, because my god, his power would have doubled by now. And then obviously, time is on my side, and no rest for the wicked. Love, 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 love this season. It's not perfect, but it's damn near close. So in the end, I'm gonna give Supernatural Season 3 a 6 out of 7. I rank this high. I rank this above 2. I rank this obviously above 1. Three is going to be my contender with five, which probably five will beat it, but we'll see. So I asked you guys to give me your comments about season three, so let's read some off. I'm still amazed that season three wasn't a complete train wreck. Due to the writer's strikes, so many shows at the time were objectively just bad because shows had to either rush storylines or cut out major narrative beats. Supernatural, however, handled it pretty well. If they had the original 22 episodes, Bella would have been more fleshed out instead of her arc being shoved in last minute in season 15. To me, she still felt mysterious this season. Sure helped the brothers every now and then, but I still didn't know what she wants and how she could help Dean get out and not then not anymore. It does help with there being 16 episodes though. It feels like there's less time for Dean to find a way out. So it's like a ticking time bomb throughout the entire season. Exactly. That is one of the biggest reasons why I will say that I like this season the most is because of that element. Season three was my favorite season for a long time, but looking back on it, it's got a mixed hex bag of decent episodes from one to six. Then it felt like seven to 16 was the show's production team's second greatest episodes back to back for a season. You can tell if the writers didn't get the show renewed, they were gonna have, they weren't gonna pull any punches. I'm going through an absolute emotional, shattering, bittersweet time of Supernatural. I really, no, it's great. I was really concerned that the show wasn't going to be renewed because of the writer strike and for WB Channel going away. Then season four came around and I wasn't worried about it being renewed because I felt like inevitably the show would go on as long as it wanted. Season three was my favorite season until season five came along. Although looking back on it, I do think I rank it below season two as well. People talk about the 16 episodes as a negative, but honestly, it kind of works perfectly in tandem with the season's arc. Dean is terrified that he only has limited time remaining in the last five episodes, and five less episodes in turn make the audience feel the same way. Again, I know it wasn't an intentional choice, but damn, I am glad it turned out the way it did. You and I both. The first episode I ever watched was this one? Was No Rest for the Wicked? Wow, damn. Love the season three finale. Season three had some great moments and some great episodes. Despite the looming writer strike, I remember being genuinely shocked that they killed Dean off. If only I knew then what I know now in terms of how the show would be would treat death as a character. It's crazy how scary demons, Lilith, Hellhounds, etc. once were relative to the, to the current seasons. 
I have nothing bad to say about season three. And those are your guys' comments. Thank you guys so much for that. And now we get to do the two videos, one of which I love and one of which I don't like. The first one being the top five worst episodes of season three. Honestly, it's bedtime stories, guys. That's it. That's the only bad one in this entire season. So those videos will be coming next. And when I do those videos, make sure to give me your guys' comments in those videos of what you guys think are your top five worst and top five best and whatnot. But well, we'll see. Thank you again. Thank you again so much for joining me on this journey through season three. And once we get through these two next videos, we will be starting season four. Woo! I haven't seen season four in a while, so I'm interested to see how it goes. Anyways, that's all for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the new wall. You're going to have it for a little while. If you like this video, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Oh, wow. We're almost almost like less than two weeks away from Supernatural coming back too, right? For season 15. Whoa, that's coming too. Yee. All right, guys, see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.